you. We'll continue the conversation right now. Joining us to talk more about Centerpoint is author and former Houston Chronicle business columnist Lauren Steffi. Yeah, he wrote an article pointing out a lot of the deficiencies that Centerpoint is dealing with. So we want to bring him in here and now into the conversation. Good morning. Thank you for being with us, sir. Okay, do we have him? Can okay, we hear him? okay now we can hear you. Okay, sorry about that. All right. One of the biggest issues here is deregulation. And you say that, you know, it took away another huge safeguard, which is accountability. So who's supposed to be holding Centerpoint accountable and why isn't it working? Well, held accountable by the Public Utility Commission. And despite the fact that they have public in their name, the PUC has never been terribly responsive to the public because their commissioners are appointed by the governor. And so, um, you know, you have this sort of multi layers of accountability, but nobody's ever actually held to account. And, um, you know, this has been the problem that has persisted really as long as we've had this sort of fractured system that we that we went to almost 25 years ago now. So when you say that, this is, this is why you wrote in your article about the, the PUC is more of an emotional support dog than an emotional watchdog. I think uh, that kind of resonates with the people. Can you explain a little more about that phrase? It has worked, always worked very closely with the industry it regulates. Um, it has never been a, a harsh enforcer or, you know, really a, a public advocate. And, and so, um, you know, a lot of the problems that we're seeing now with Centerpoint are problems that have been there for a long time that just haven't been dealt with because um, there's no incentive to force a company to spend a lot of money to make investments uh, for things that might happen in the future. Uh, with the way we've run this grid for the last 25 years is we wait for a catastrophe to happen and then we scramble around and we say, oh, this is what we need to do. And by the way, there's this big bill for it that's gonna kind of float around and guess where it ultimately winds up? It winds up on, in this case, on the people of Houston. You know, the, the fundamental problem here is that we have to understand that even, even though we're the end customers, we don't matter in this system. It was not created to benefit us. And I'll just touch on that um, right there. You said that Houstonians have already paid dearly for this deregulation debacle. So how much have Houstonians paid? Where has that money gone? Well, it, it depends how far back you want to go in the process. Um, but it's it, the, the, everything here involves billions and billions of dollars, okay? Uh, if you go back to the early days of deregulation when the companies, the, the old Houston Lighting and Power was split up, um, you know, the generating uh, company, you know, ultimately the generating assets wound up with NRG. Um, but those those assets were sold by Centerpoint on the cheap, and, uh, you know, that wound up costing uh, you know, Houstonians a few billion dollars. We had things like the 2021 freeze where, you know, all ratepayers in Texas or everybody in ERCOT uh, is, is going to be paying billions of dollars. And, and you know, I made the point that, that if you have grandchildren right now, if they're in diapers, when they reach adulthood and they start paying electric bills, they're still going to be paying for mistakes that were made in 2021. So, you know, these have, these have big costs associated with them and uh, they tend to hang around for a long time and, and and, you know, the numbers just keep getting bigger and bigger and the system isn't getting any better. Uh, let's talk about the CEO. Do you think uh, Jason Wells should resign? Um, you know, I, I, everybody keeps talking about that like it should be his decision, and it, and it really shouldn't. I mean, what we've seen is a is a, a cultural failing within Centerpoint. This is not a company that is focused on its responsibility to the people of Houston. And so uh, I would think that by now Centerpoint's board would have realized that and would be actively working to remove him. And, you know, I think, again, the PUC should be holding the company accountable. Cultural change is tough. Um, it has to come from the top. And in a situation like this, it probably needs to come from somebody with an outside perspective. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's tough for him. He hasn't been in the job that long, but he's certainly been in the culture of Centerpoint. And I don't think he's going to be the, the agent for change that the company needs at this point. And really quickly, I just want to get this last question in. The governor had some, some strong words for Centerpoint. Do you think that he's going to follow through? Well, you know, we've seen this pattern before. The governor's good at strong words. He demands plans. There's, you know, a lot of sort of political theater around this. But in the end, not much has changed. Um, you know, we're still still uh, as vulnerable as we were after 2021. We haven't made significant changes. So I'm not 
overly hopeful that we're going to see, um, you know, the kind of whole scale changes that are needed uh, now. Mm -hmm. All right. That's uh, author, former Houston Chronicle business columnist, Lauren Steffi, joining us this morning. You can read his full article at the Chronicle website. Thank you, sir, for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you.